Hello YouTube students, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at quadratic linear systems of equations. In particular, I want to look at the problem, solve the following system of linear equations algebraically, where we have y equals x squared plus 4x minus 5, and we have y equals negative 2x plus 2. Now before we begin, let's look at what we're going to need to solve this problem. We need the transitive property of equality, which basically states if a is equal to b and a is equal to c, then we have that b is equal to c. We're going to apply this transitive property to this system of equations so we can reduce it down to one equation where we could solve for a particular variable. Next, we're going to need to be able to factor. In particular, we need to be able to factor a quadratic equation into two binomials. And once we have those two binomials, we're, we're going to need to be able to find the roots or the zeros of that quadratic equation because the roots or the zeros are going to be important for us finding the pair of points that satisfy these particular equations in our system. And finally, once we have the pair of points that, we, you know, that we're looking for, we need to be able to substitute them into either of these equations in order to see if the points do satisfy both of the equations in our system. And our solutions are going to be in the form of x comma y. Keeping in mind that we have two variables for each equation, so we need a pair of points that's going to satisfy both. So now let's go ahead and get started by using this transitive property of equality, we're going to apply that to this system of equations. In particular, I want to, in some sense, let A equal Y. So when we're applying this transitive property, think of A as the Y equals. So then this allows us to say if Y equals X squared plus 4X minus 5, and Y equals negative 2X plus 2, then we have X squared plus 4X minus 5, equals negative 2x plus 2. And now the reason why we want to set them equal to each other like this is because we're looking for a common pair of points which satisfies both of these equations. Now I know we're doing this algebraically, but in some sense we're looking at the equation of a parabola and we're looking at the equation of a line. So we're looking for when these two points are going to Oh, I'm sorry, when these two equations are going to intersect, what points do they have in common? So this is why we're setting them equal, because we're trying to see where they match up. So now let's go ahead and get all of the terms on one side. Since we're trying to factor a quadratic equation, we need it to say equal zero on the right-hand side. So we're going to add 2x, and we're going to subtract 2. So then we've got to do the same thing on the left-hand side. We're going to add 2x and subtract 2. Now on the right hand side we have a negative 2x plus 2x. This is going to cancel and we have a positive 2 and a minus 2 is going to cancel. So we have that 0 equals that we need. And on the left hand side we have x squared. Now a 4x plus 2x is a plus 6x. And now a minus 5 minus 2 is a minus 7. So now the factoring stage. How do we factor this quadratic equation? Well we need to ask ourselves what two numbers will sum to a positive 6 and multiply to a negative 7. After a little bit more thought, we'll arrive at x plus 7, x minus 1. And now what this allows us to do is now we can find the roots or the zeros of this quadratic equation here. So now, when is this left-hand side equal to 0? Well, when we have x plus 7 equals 0, or when x minus 1 is equal to 0. So this tells us that our two x values that satisfy this quadratic equation, by subtracting 7, we find that one of them is x equals negative 7, and we find the other one to be x equals positive 1. And now what we need to do with these particular x values, what do they mean? Well, this is telling us the x values, they're in some sense the critical points, and we need to plug them back into both of these equations in our system. So let's go ahead and start with the equation y equals negative 2x plus 2. I want to evaluate y equals negative 2x plus 2 for the x values that we just found. So now let's go ahead and we'll start with x equals negative 7. So what happens when x equals negative 7? We want to find the corresponding y value. Well this gives us y equals negative 2 and now instead of x we have negative 7 plus 2. So this tells us the corresponding y value is y equals negative 2 times negative 7 is a positive 14. So we have 14 plus 2 which gives us y equals 16. So y equals 16 is the corresponding y value for when x equals negative 7. 
which tells us that a potential solution to the system is the point negative 7, 16. Now the reason why I say potential solution is because we evaluated this for the linear equation. We need to check this for the quadratic equation. It's always a good idea to check your work to make sure you did everything right. So now what do we need to do next? Well, we just checked x equals negative 7. So now we need to check x equals positive 1. And keep in mind, we're evaluating this right now for y equals negative 2x plus 2. We're worrying about the first equation for now. So now when x equals positive 1, we have y equals negative 2 times positive 1 plus 2. And now how does this simplify? Well, this is going to give us y equals negative 2 times positive 1 is negative 2. So we have a negative 2 plus 2, which tells us that our corresponding y value is y equals 0. So this tells us that the pair of points which satisfies this linear equation is the point 1, comma, 0. So this is another potential solution to the system. But now that we found these two potential solutions, we need to go ahead and evaluate them for the quadratic equation in our system. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're looking at the equation we're looking at y equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. And let's go ahead and evaluate this first for x equals negative 7. Or you know what, we'll just go ahead and plug in the point. x equals negative 7, y equals positive 16. We could go ahead and just evaluate this at this point. So well, when we have x equals negative 7 and y equals 16, this tells us that 16 equals, and we have, remember every time we see an x, now we're going to substitute negative 7. So we have negative 7 squared plus 4 times negative 7 minus 5. And now how does this simplify? Well, we have 16 equals negative 7 squared is a positive 49. And now we have 4 times negative 7. This is a negative 28. And we have minus 5. Well, keep in mind, what is... To simplify this right-hand side, we have 49 minus 28, that's a positive 21, and now 21 minus 5 is a positive 16, which tells us that our point checks out for this quadratic equation. So the point negative 7, 16 is also a solution for the quadratic equation that we have here. Next, the last thing we need to do is check the point 1, 0. Does 1, 0 also satisfy this quadratic equation? Well, we're looking at x equals 1, y equals 0 when we're plugging in the point 1, 0. And keep in mind, we're plugging this into x squared. I'm sorry, y equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. So now we have y equals 0, so we have 0 equals. And every time we see an x, now we're going to substitute 1. So we have 1 squared plus 4 times 1, minus 5. So 0 equals 1 plus 4 minus 5. 1 plus 4 is 5, and 5 minus 5 is 0. So this tells us 0 equals 0, which checks. So this confirms that 1, 0 is in fact a solution to both equations in the system. And also, negative 7, 16 is also a solution to both equations in the system. So if we wanted to be formal and put our answers together, the solution to this problem would be the points negative 7, 16 and the point 1, 0. Okay, and this is how we would solve a system of quadratic linear equations, graph I'm sorry, algebraically. Okay, well this is going to conclude this problem as well as this video. Thank you all for watching and I hope that it was helpful.